Here's what we're going to do. We're having a debate format here. We're going to spend about the next 10 minutes doing this. We're going to start off by giving them a chance to ask a short question each and have 30 seconds to answer it. There'll be a 15-second rebuttal of that answer after that. Then we're going freestyle for a bit. And then at the end, they'll have a chance just to wrap up. So um, I don't know if you guys are ready for this. Bob, we're going to start with you and whether you have a question for Eric. Eric, I see that Watson does a very good job on Jeopardy. Yep. I see that Deep Blue does a very good job in chess. But these are all sort of single-purpose machines. Do you see this combination in which individual computers can replace humans with the wide range of things that humans do? Well, I have to confess that I've been wrong about artificial intelligence. In fact, I, made, I underestimated its potential. The latest wave of AI work has taken advantage of big data to solve problems in a totally different way, not the way people solve problems, but in, uh, by, by throwing a lot of data on it. That's how they're doing machine translation now. That's how they got the Google car to drive down the road. Five and, seconds. and the result is that we have complementary skills to them. What they can do is very different than what we can do. I don't see that it, the goal is ultimately to, make a, uh, to mimic us, but to actually create some tools that can reinforce what we're doing. Quick rebuttal. You lost your rebuttal because you went over. Yeah, go, go ahead. Let, let, uh, <laughs> All right, you've got a let question. him ask you've me got a, my question. Okay. Question for Bob. Well, well Bob, you mentioned the first headwind um, was the, that people are working fewer hours. And I think that's right. Um, but we're economists, and um, you know, the goal is not to produce more stuff, it's to make us happier, increase utility in, in the terms of your textbook, right? Um, so isn't it a good thing that we're able to work fewer hours, that we can retire more earlier, or people can take more vacations? Isn't that kind of the, one of our goals? First of all, early retirement uh, is the source of pension problems. Early retirement has caused the Greek fiscal uh, blow up. You need to have the retirement age increased steadily with life expectancy. The whole reason we have retirement is primarily because it used to be that jobs were manual. Now, most of them are white collar. They're not difficult. Hmm. So I, I just want to um, draw out the difference between you a bit, because you actually do agree on, on quite a few things. There are two big things that I heard. One, Bob, you're arguing basically that the type of innovation of the 20th century is just far more significant than anything we've seen in the last 10 years and are likely to see going forward. You disagree with that. You have a view of history that is six to one in this audience, what we have, of basically of, of accelerating progress. Well, of probably some... not anymore. After Bob's talk, it's probably more like two to one or one to one. <laughs> we'll see. Um, you, if I could... If I could interpret that blip that you had into a growth thing, it means that you, I think your view of history is like this, along along 0.2% uh, growth, surge of growth for 100 years or so, 150 years, and then flattening out to 0.2% forever after that. So it's, you, you, you believe in that, and you believe in the S. Well, um, we've got the history. We know we, we accelerated. Uh, we know that there were such great things. I mean, think of the significance of three big inventions that occurred in the first two decades after World War II. Air conditioning, it opened up the South. Interstate highway system vastly increased the productivity of the supply chain uh, and truck drivers. Isn't there a possibility that you're basically subject to a, just a human psychological illusion that we see change naturally and we think we're in this fast-changing era, but actually compared to what happened 100 years ago, it's just not nearly as significant. The grandfather in 1950 saw much more change in his life than the grandfather today. Well, there's no question that changes are different. I think we've taken care of a lot of our physiological needs, like the toilet and all of that, and that, that's great. You know, I wouldn't want to go back, and I, would, I was thrilled when my, when, when my kids learned how to be toilet trained. But you know, there's, <laughs> there's more to life than just taking care of those basic needs. And I think there's a, there is a psychological, a basic mistake that people make, is that when you're sitting on the top of an S-curve, you know, Inventions go through S-curves. You're sitting on top of back one. You think you, you can see what you've gotten so far. It's a lot harder to look forward and see the things that haven't been invented yet. Mm. So we, I think, have a bias that we see. You know, 200 years ago, Bob Gordon's grandfather might have said that we have reached the pinnacle of horseshoe manufacturing. You just can't make it any better. Um, but you have to look at what the next inventions are going to be. Uh, so I think, Bob, the, the charge here is that, is that uh, you just... You lack imagination. You're not... 
What, 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 we why all is, do. Why is that wrong? Well, Eric really nailed it when he, when he said we've got this disconnect between productivity and employment. I mean, take the robots. The robots are going to make money for the people who invent them. They're going to make money for the people who own them. And they're going to dis displace workers. The refrigerator guy said, that's the only thing I know how to do with my life. And many of them are dropping out. What good is a world in which we have these really snazzy machines and we listen to all this great music for free on the internet, but we don't have gainful employment and we have the next generation coming up with high school dropouts? So, so this is the key difference between you. No, 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 actually, I agree. This is, their, I think, our key source of agreement. I think technology is racing ahead. The problem is that instead of this freeing up time for us all to you know, have a digital Athens and write poetry or whatever, some people are going, becoming unemployed. A lot of people aren't sharing this. So the problem is not with our technology. It's with ourselves. We need to reinvent our organizations so that we can share this prosperity more broadly if that's the society we want to live in. How do we do that? I don't have the answer yet. <laughs> I've got some. How do we do that? I've got some. OK, first thing, we have too many old people, not enough young people. We not only need to uh, legalize all the illegal immigrants, we need to let people come in when they want. It is total insanity that we have tourist visas. We have millions of people in China that want to come and visit this country. Why not let them come and visit this country? And hopefully a few of the smartest ones will stay and invent more good stuff. And something else. We have a lot of young African-American men going to prison because we penalize drug use we could simultaneously cut $50 billion in costs. We could really cream those drug gangs and cartels in Mexico if we just legalized drugs. All right. Who knew? Who knew we were heading in, in this direction? A, co <laughs> a couple of comments from you. Um, Mitch. Kapoor has pointed out that in rural China, new housing lacks indoor plumbing, but everyone has a cell phone. Interesting. I'd actually like to do that vote here. I don't know if you can get Palm Springs on. Do it there as well. I'm, I'm going to do a version of your experiment. If you had the choice between living in a place with indoor plumbing, hot showers and a toilet, but no internet, no internet, no access, or internet and no indoor plumbing or whatever. You had to just make do, go off to the river or something like that. <laughs> so you're going to retain the internet. And this is, by the way, for the next year. And you have to carry the water you, in you, buckets, remember. You have to no do, pipes. You have to do that. <laughs> Who will retain indoor plumbing? <laughs> Who will retain the internet? <laughs> you know, that is about... 60, 40, <laughs> we have, I knew we had at least 40% nerdish tendency people at TED. But yeah, was, but you cheated was, because I, you made him give up the whole internet <laughs> and I only made him give up the last yeah, 10 yeah, years. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, one more, one more comment from Nick Marks. Um, he's just saying that, look, it's not about economic growth. The, the issue is better human lives. And, and this, this right. seems to be the core of this issue. You're saying, you're both saying that so much of the growth that is there is being lost because it's not going to the bottom 99%. That's what you're measuring when you say that growth is, is over. And I think you agree that that is a serious problem. And I, I think do. we all... I do agree. Is um, redistributive tax part of your solution here? We have a lot of tax loopholes. We have a lot of tax subsidies. And I think we need wholesale tax reform. But also we need something else. And that is we need early remedial childhood education for the poverty population. <laughs> all right. Now, Peter, Peter Thiel uh, was, was going to be here, couldn't, couldn't make it, he was going to be part of this debate. He famously said, you know, we dreamed of flying cars and what we got is 140 characters. Um, and, and the point to you is, you know, you talk about this wonderful future of innovation, but then your example was cat robots, you know, that would move a cat along. <laughs> well, I think that was the most important invention, no? <laughs> but isn't there a worry that all these amazing things, the app that your student created, just put pictures on a grid or whatever, it's not that significant as what has happened before. No, no, I disagree. I mean, so let's take the, Bob gave the example that we can't go faster than the speed of sound. 
Actually, that's not what I learned in physics. In fact, you can go a lot faster than that. And recently, I had Hal Varian come and speak at my class at MIT. And a, less than a second later, he was talking to Larry Page in、uh, California. How did he do that? Because he came in by video conference. And so we have a lot of innovations that are completely doing an end run around the horse carriage or the 707. And just because they're made of bits, Doesn't make them any less valuable if they're changing the way people live. My last hey, question hey, for you: How come you came out here on a plane instead of video conferencing in? <laughs> We made it.、Um, <clears throat> my last, my last question for you, Bobby, is this: you, You've made a good case that, in terms of the, the physical way that we live our lives, there's been spectacular change. Last century, not so much now. But couldn't someone say that what we're getting now is spectacular innovation in knowledge, and that the question is? What matters more, the way you commute to work, the way you live your life, or what you actually know? I'm just going to say, knowledge for what? What is the value of all this knowledge? What is the actual value of Facebook? What is the value of friendship? Okay, well, those are great well, questions. <laughs> to, those are great questions to reverberate during、um, the rest of this week.、Um, we're out of time on this one. I would like to have another vote, though. So just stay here and watch this. We'll bring up Palm Springs, please, on, on the thing. And you at home, do your own little vote and tell us what the answer is. I want to know. I'm just going to go back to that original simple question. Do you believe that, all things considered, that?、Um, The story of our history and our likely future is accelerated progress.、Um, yes or no? Who, who votes no now? Having listened to this, who votes no? Okay, and who votes yes? So, as Shakespeare said, much sound and fury about nothing. No one's mind was changed. No. At all all <laughs> no. At least ten were changed. I counted. You know what? You know what I think happened. I think. Everyone got to a more nuanced and rich understanding of some of these issues, and I'm telling you what, this is going to infuse the rest of this conference. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you. It was awesome.